I train an AI in one line of code to help me clean my room, and you can too. But first, why? Mr. Peterson, one question. How do we become a great machine learning engineer? Clean up your room. Okay, that means to grow as a person, it's okay to start with cleaning your room. It's not okay. It's necessary. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you've heard it here first. We're on it. Clean your room. So to train our AI to detect our messy laundry, we need to collect our own data. That means we get to throw around t-shirts and hoodies, take pictures, fold the clothes back together, take more pictures, make a mess, take pictures, clean it up, pictures, mess, pictures, mess, mess. And in the end I collected about 50 images. You know, more would definitely be better, but this should be enough. Now we need to annotate the data. That means tell the model what is considered messy and what is clean. Luckily there is this amazing tool called V7, which makes the whole process a lot easier. And done. Well, now already we are pretty much done with the most time consuming part. Now, if you're not a cool nerd and don't care about a tiny bit of details, you can just skip this section. Oh, so you're still here. Very good. Okay, so for this object detection task, we'll be using the YOLO v5 model. Yes, YOLO as in the 2012 viral You Only Live Once. But now it's called You Only Look Once. Because with this model, we detect all bounding boxes and labels at once, in one pass. Okay, okay, one step back. What's the alternative? Well, what was done before is to first detect a bounding box and then apply a classification model to that bounding box. Then apply the classifier again for the next bounding box, then again and again and again. So you can imagine that that is pretty slow. Now, what does the YOLO model do? To make it short, it splits the whole image in little segments and predicts for every single one of those segments a bounding box and a class distribution. You can imagine that there will be a lot of bounding boxes, so there is a lot of post-processing to clean up the mess and only actually return the best predictions. Well, in the end, you'll just have your bounding boxes, but now it just makes it super fast. Okay, so far, so great. We'll be using the small version of this model, but that's still over 7 million parameters. And those 50 images that you have just won't be enough to train those 7 million parameters. But luckily there's a thing called transfer learning, or more specifically fine-tuning. We can just take an already trained model that is trained on the huge Kogo dataset and can predict the Kogo classes. But that doesn't really help us because we have different classes, right? Wrong. You see, a new network just takes some input like this image, which is just a bunch of numbers, does some math magic, and just transforms it into a new list of numbers. The final layer of the new network then takes this new list of numbers and maps it to a probability distribution of the classes. So what we can just do is pop off this final layer and replace it with one that predicts our two classes. The YOLO model output, as mentioned, looks a tiny bit different than just two output nodes, but you get the point. What has happened now is that this whole part of the neural network is already very good at transforming images into good vector representations, and we now mainly need to learn how to properly map those to our new outputs. Oof. Okay, let's continue. Since we have our labels exported from V7, we now need to split our data into data for training and data for validation. So for now, our folder structure will look like this. We have a data directory, in which we have one directory for images and one for our just exported labels. Inside both of those, we have again more folders, one for the training data and one for the validation data. Okay, we can finally get to the intense coding part. First, we need to clone the repository. Second, we need to add this config file where we provide the path to the data and define our classes. Third, select the training parameters and run the training script using this command. And then... Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's literally it. You will probably need to tune the parameters in the training command. For example, you might need more or perhaps less epochs. Perhaps your machine can handle a larger batch size. 
try out a different optimizer or go for one of the larger models. But now you can successfully call yourself a machine learning engineer. Okay, okay, not quite yet, but we're almost there. After we're done training for our 70 epochs, let's try out our AI and clean our room. As you saw in the beginning, it works. I guess I should have added a few training images with me in the picture. Now the model thinks I'm a mess myself. Well, perhaps it's not wrong. But here are a few more examples. I now have an AI that can tell me whenever there is some messy laundry laying around. Now let's quickly look at the simple inference code that produces the output that you just saw. We'll first load our custom model and provide the network architecture. Then we'll tell the model to only show detections where its confidence is 80% or better. Then we'll get the path to an example image and just plot it after passing it through the model. For making real-time predictions, just use this standard CV2 video capture code. You can use it with the webcam or also on a video. We're here just running predictions frame by frame. Okay, okay, I get it. I'm a mess. Now it's getting toxic. As you can see, building such an object detection AI is really not difficult at all, and you can definitely do it too. Your creativity is pretty much the limit here. You could make an AI that detects ripe versus unripe berries, for example, strawberries. Or you could make an AI that detects angry versus happy faces. And if you want to build a similar fun weekend project, you definitely need to watch this video here, where I show you how to use the 7 tool and that it can do way more than just bounding boxes. I'm really looking forward to seeing your cool projects. Bye.